this is the biggest Dreamforce ever, also the biggest event in San Francisco ever, and the biggest event in the city since the pandemic. Can you feel the energy? I, I do feel the well, energy. What do you feel? Well, it, it feels different, and actually that's my question for you. Oh, okay, sorry. Does it feel different to you than it did before? Like, has, has Everybody is so changed? happy to be back. You know, the energy is so powerful. But to have 40,000 folks here in San Francisco, in the new Moscone Center, is beautiful. Every hotel is sold out from here to San Jose. Every Airbnb is sold out. It's amazing. And they're all having such a good time and, and learning about technology and learning about how to connect with their customers in a new way using Salesforce. We're going to talk a little bit about the state of the city in a moment. But first, you announced new profitability goals yesterday, yes. long-term profitability, aiming for 25% adjusted operating margin in 2026. What makes you feel so ambitious in a downturn? Well, you probably saw this quarter we delivered $7.7 billion. It was larger than an SAP, a company that you know we both admire so greatly, but now we're the largest enterprise apps company in, a wor in the world. That's very exciting. And so we have the highest revenue, and now we want to have very strong margins, and we've taken a goal that when we get to 50 billion, which is right around the corner, we will have 25% uh, operating margin. So you're also doing these carbon offsets, which is fairly unique, more net zero, offerings, do you see this as philanthropy or do you see real revenue generated from the carbon accounting market? Well, I think that when you think about a modern business today, you have to have great revenue, you have to have a great margin. You also have to look at your overall capital allocation. We're buying back $10 billion of our stock. Uh, we just uh, promoted our lead director, Robin Washington. But when you think about the values of a company today, trust, customer success, innovation, equality, we've spoken about all of those, Emily, for a decade or more. Now we're talking about sustainability. Everybody has a personal story about the environment. Everybody knows what's happening. So every company needs to go net zero. And so we have a new net zero cloud. We have a net zero marketplace. We have the ability to help all of our customers go net zero. This is extremely important. And we even started you know, our Trillion Tree program, 1T.org. We've made phenomenal progress. This is very important that we get a trillion trees. We need to sequester 200 gigatons yeah. of carbon. And we need to energize an ecopreneur revolution. And we can do all that, and we are doing it here at Dreamforce. Meantime, the economy is in a major slump. You've got record inflation, rising rate hikes, and ongoing war. How concerned are you about the outlook and, and your level of uncertainty? What do you see? Well, what I see is that we just went through a pandemic. Uh, and I know we talked a lot during the pandemic for a couple of years. And it was tough for a lot of folks, including me and you. We're at home a lot of the time trying to run our daily businesses and make things happen. And the government invested a lot into the market. And now we're coming out of the pandemic. And I think those e-commerce charts that we see a lot are great metaphors. You know, the ones that go like in the pandemic, out of the pandemic. But if you connect e-commerce from 10 years ago to today, the chart is still quite up and to the right. It's just that you had two years in the pandemic. So I think the economy is normalizing. The world is normalizing. Currencies are quite aggressively fluctuating. We've been talking about that since May. And uh, uh, I think, look, what do I know? This is my first pandemic. But in the future, I know that after a pandemic, you're going to have some adjustment period. Right. Meta and Google are just the latest companies cutting jobs. I spoke to Tim Cook. He said Apple is going to be more deliberate about spending. Satya Nadella just told me today we're going to do more with less. I know Salesforce slowed hiring a bit earlier in the year, but are you expecting any job cuts or cost cuts? What's your strategy to navigate this? I think what you're seeing for all of these companies, including ours, is we all invested aggressively in the last two years, and we are absorbing those investments into our businesses now. So we have a lot online and moving forward, and we need to enable that and energize it and motivate it. So you're right, we did slow slightly our hiring, but uh, do I see other changes? You know, who knows what's gonna happen? It's not certainly not our intention. Our intention is to continue to get to $50 billion in revenue, by FY26. Last year we did 26 billion. This year we're going to do 31 billion. And by fiscal year 26, we want to do 50 billion. 
You, of course, uh, well, last... hire some people along <laughs> the way. All right, we'll look out for that. You did a huge acquisition last year, Slack. The economy was humming. Now we're seeing Adobe signing an agreement to buy Figma for $20 billion. What do you make of them spending that kind of money in a downturn? Well, I think every company has to choose their strategic moment and their strategic opportunity. For us in the last five years, there were three companies important to us to kind of achieve our strategic goal. We want to help companies connect with their customers in a whole new way, to build a customer 360. We want them to build a system of engagement, which is why we bought Slack. We want them to build a system of intelligence, which is why we bought Tableau. We want them to build a system of integration, a single source of truth, which is why we bought MuleSoft. Are you going to continue to be acquisitive, especially as valuations come down? We'll always buy companies. We've bought 60 companies. We'll always buy companies. But we have three companies, large companies, that we've acquired. And a lot of the folks who are here, I just spoke to one, one from one of the large acquired companies, Tableau, they've never been to Dreamforce before because there wasn't really a Dreamforce occurring when we acquired you know, and closed Tableau. So this is an opportunity for all these new Salesforce employees. You know, Half of everybody here who's a Salesforce employee started in the last two years. That's Think about incredible. that. You've been to Dreamforce before. <laughs> I've been to Dreamforce, but half of all of our employees have never been to Dreamforce. So they don't really know who we are. They don't understand all of our values really well. They don't understand the customer excitement. They don't really understand how we operationalize our values into our business. This is their chance to really see it in action. Speaking of Slack, how, how are you thinking about the Uber hack fiasco? You know, Slack is this office in the cloud. They had internal Slack messages hacked. Do you worry about the security of Slack and all that office drama getting leaked? Customers need to protect their passwords. <laughs> it's hard. Customers also need to, um, you know, teach their employees how not to be socially engineered. In all cases, those things are out there. And um, it's very unfortunate when something like that occurs. We've had, it's happened to all of us, it's happened to me. And I wanna make sure that I'm helping customers to not suffer any kind of an issue like that. San Francisco still hasn't recovered. Yes, this is great, but there are restaurants closed. Uh, companies have left, they've sold their office space. Are you worried about the future of San Francisco? Does that I mean, as such a great champion of this city? I'm not, and I'm excited about the future of San Francisco, and it's right here. Whoa, it's right here. <laughs> There's something here, Just a basketball. Somebody put a volleyball net behind me while I wasn't looking. Um, the future of San Francisco is right here. And that means that um, when we bring in big groups like this, 40,000 people, we haven't had any major incidents here. It's been incredible success. All the restaurants are filled. All the hotels are filled. There'll be $40 million added to the local economy. I hope we're not the only conference scheduling San Francisco. This is a lot better than Vegas. This is a lot better than Chicago. This is a lot better than Miami. Look at the weather. You know, right? You and I live yeah, here. We love, we love it. We live it. We love it here, right? San Francisco is we love San Francisco. Great. I know you do. You have a great office on the marina. Okay, but and it's awesome. You know, Elon Musk, for example, had this poll on Twitter where he asked if he should turn Twitter's headquarters into a homeless shelter. Yes. Does that bug you? I mean, as Kind of a representative I don't think we can take anything that Elon Musk is saying right now as evidence of anything. You know, he's got an agenda, so let's just let it let him play it out as he wants to. Well, speaking of that, your co-CEO Brett Taylor is chair of Twitter. I know he's probably been a li little busy with that. I saw um, probably so a little. I saw you and Brett on stage in Bunny Ears. Yes. I want to know how it's going. Like. How is it going to have a co-CEO? Are you spending a little less time on the day-to-day -day now that he's here? Well, as you know, I love Brett. I've loved him for a long time. We've had a great relationship, a multi-decade relationship. When he started his company, I invested in it. I always wanted to acquire it. We're so lucky we did acquire it. Then I moved him up slowly in the company. Chief product officer, chief operating officer, now co-CEO. I think we got a fantastic leader of the company. Look, you have to understand, these are big jobs, CEO. These CEOs, I know them all. There's no S under here. If I take my shirt off, it, I'm just skin and bones. 
There's no S. And I think that having a partner like Brett Taylor to help me is incredible, and I could not be more grateful. Yeah, it's so much value, and it's so impressive so and important. how much longer are you going to be doing this co-CEO thing? Well, as long as, you know, everybody wants me to do it. So far, it seems to be working. Um, you're giving another huge education grant. This is the 10th year of it. I actually interviewed you, I believe, the very first you year. You did. You were you very skeptical. <laughs> you're like, there's no way you're going to do this for 10 years. Well, you did it for 10 years. And we did it. We're given over $100 million to our San Francisco and Oakland public schools. This has been very important for them, especially as they're exiting the pandemic. They're getting another $25 million. This is not the end of the program. It's set up to go in perpetuity. How are you thinking very about exciting. the state of the U.S. education system right now, and is the government doing enough? I think that our public education system has to be at the top of every leader's mind, and you cannot delegate it to the government. You as a CEO or as a business leader or in another part of your organization, you need to go down to your local public school, three blocks away from your house, you know where yours is, knock on the door, introduce yourself to the principal and say, how can I help? I built a new playground. Parker Harris painted the building. You know, we installed technology. We did volunteerism and mentorship. Everybody can do something. We cannot do everything. Companies have a lot of resources. We have the, some of the best, most exciting companies in the country. These companies need to be supporting our local public schools and also our local public hospitals. You know we've done a lot with UCSF here in San Francisco. And public parks as well. We just opened a massive $100 million public park called Tunnel Tops. You know that my wife is the chairman of it. It's incredible. These are the things that CEOs and companies should have their eyes on, figure out how to put a light on it, bring their customers in, and bring all stakeholders together. Well, speaking of what other CEOs are doing, I, I understand Matthew McConaughey was here, and he kind of like hinted at a run for president. Um, he was the star of a big ad that you rolled out earlier this year that took a dig at going to space and going to Mars and building the metaverse. Um, you know, do you think the, the metaverse? New frontier, it's right here. Let's and plant some trees. Let's take care of each other. We just exited a pandemic. Let's take care of our schools. Let's take care of our hospitals. Like, let's take care of our parks. Look, what other folks are doing, it's very exciting. They're building products. They're innovating in technology. They believe in self-reliance. You know, we also need empathy. We also need compassion. We also need to take care of others who are not as fortunate as we are. This is very important, that's what we're talking about here at Dreamforce. Our core values are trust, customer success, innovation, equality, and sustainability. It's not the first time you've heard me say this. This company is almost a quarter century old, and this is the 20th Dreamforce, not the first Dreamforce, and that's the power of this. So hopefully that means I can take a puppy home on my way out. You is can that have okay? two. 